I hope you're ready because I'm about to share my display secrets that I've learned over years of setting up at craft shows. And be sure to watch to the end because I share a strategy that is proven to increase your sales by 20% at shows. Hey, hey makers, my name is Cameron and like you, I run my own crochet business. Here on YouTube, I love teaching you ways that you can start making more sales at markets. All these tips are easy for you to implement into your next craft show and start making some more sales immediately. Okay, I'm so excited for you guys to learn some of these display tips, so let's get started. First things first, you're gonna unload your car completely. I know it's gonna be tempting to start setting up as you're unloading, but trust me, you're gonna save so much time if you just unload all at once. Next step is set up your canopy. I get a lot of questions if you can set up a canopy alone. You can, and I'm gonna make a whole nother YouTube video exactly how to do that, but if you have some help, I highly suggest it because it goes a lot quicker. Next, we're gonna start setting up our larger display items. So here I am showing you my table. I mentioned these in last week's video, but they are super great. I have two six foot tables and those are definitely our two big display items that I start out with. And here I am weighing down my tent. You should definitely do that right after you set up your tent, even if it's not that windy. I also mentioned these tablecloths in last week's video. They are amazing. They just go underneath your legs on your table and they stay so well and they're so pretty. Once I figure out where my tables are going, that's when I put the tablecloths on and then I move on to my next display items. I also mentioned these in last week's video, but I love these wooden racks and I add the little hanger part as well. The other hanger I accidentally put on backwards, so I had to take that off and switch it around. But it doesn't take that long. It is the most time consuming part of these stands, but it really doesn't take that long at all. Here is my pegboard. I like putting that up in the front because it's easier for customers to interact with it. Another big display item I use is this backdrop that my dad helped me make last year. I'm gonna put it behind my racks I just set up because I really like the way this looks and I love putting pumpkins by it. It looks really pretty. I'll show you in a little bit. I also asked my dad last year if he could help me make a little checkout stand and he helped me with this which is super great because I can collapse it which is awesome for transporting and I also can hang my bags on the side and I'm gonna show you in a second but it also has a drawer where I like to keep business cards also my card reader or things like that I don't keep cash in there because I like to keep my cash on me here's a little closer look to that drawer I was telling you about I think it's super cool I love showing it off so shout out to my dad I also love using TV trays. They are so easy to set up. Watch, it takes literally two seconds. I'm pretty sure I found these as a set somewhere for really cheap. I don't remember, but I'll link similar ones in the description box below. You'll probably recognize some of these display items from last week's video, but there is my chair. And now we are on to the next section, which is setting up display items, but smaller display items. I love using crates because I can organize my different sizes in there really easily. And I'm gonna add some more smaller display items to my little pumpkin patch area. The hay is super cute, but pro tip, don't put your pumpkins right on the hay. You're gonna wanna put like a bucket on top of the hay like I am, or you're gonna get hay all over your inventory. And I'm just adding my pegs on my pegboard here. Here is my professional banner I talked about in last week's video. And here I am putting it up with just some bungee cords. I love putting my banner in the back where people aren't gonna hit their head on it. So we still don't have any of our inventory out. This is just a good base to get started with. No inventory quite yet. I'm just really trying to get a good base going. And you might think, why am I not adding my inventory yet? Honestly, just trust me, you save so much time if you do all your display stuff first before even touching your inventory. In last week's video, we talked a lot about vertical interests and adding vertical displays. So here's a way I like to do that with my mannequin by just rising it up on one of these buckets. Another fun display item you can add is this table runner. I just think it looks so pretty. Here is what that display looks like. And now we're gonna start adding our inventory. So I'm gonna start with the pegboard and add my scrunchies. As you can see, I'm adding them kind of by color. So at the top, I have my pink tones, then I have some grays and neutrals and yellows, and then I have more of my blue colors at the bottom. I'm also organizing my keychains by color. 
for my inventory of my uh, beanies of all sizes, I like to try to put out two of each color if I have it. I just think it looks really nice and really clean. Honestly, adding your inventory is going to take the longest out of your whole display setup just because adding them, you kind of have to organize everything and make it look all pretty. If you haven't set up a market before, I highly suggest doing a practice setup in your backyard so you can tell how long your setup is actually going to take you and also get a better idea on how you want to display all your items. That's actually what I'm doing in this video. I'm in my parents' backyard just doing a practice setup. And after you're done doing your practice setup, you can take pictures and see how you liked it and you can actually replicate the entire display at your next market. So if you have some time before your market, definitely schedule some time to do a practice setup and time yourself doing the setup because sometimes it'll take a lot longer than you would think. And I'm just going to mention this because I know I'm going to get questions on it, but I will have all of my display items linked in the description box below if you want any of these for yourself. Like I said before, some of these things my dad made for me, but the things that he didn't make for me, I'll have linked below. I love these pumpkin racks. I call them pumpkin racks. These wooden racks from Amazon. I hang my scarves on the top and then I add my pumpkins on the shelves down below. So this is what my display looks like after adding all of my inventory. After this step, your booth is going to look almost ready, but we still have a couple more things left to do. Usually this table is kind of just my extra items. There's my banner. And as you can see, my pegboard needs some signage. So we're going to start adding signs, which is the next step. Would you like to see a video all about how to make signs for your market? Let me know in the comments below and I can show you my favorite ways to make signs. Pricing signs, sizes signs, and social media signs. We're getting so close to finish setting up. I love adding a little bit of decor. I love adding greenery and floral. Is this step totally necessary? No, but it does add that little touch that honestly draws customers in so I would suggest if you have a little bit of decor like this to add it it really does just kind of add that finishing touch I get a lot of this floral at Joann's or Hobby Lobby here is a walkthrough of what my display looks like so far it's pretty close to being finished like I said before, I love having my pegboard at the front because it's easier for our customers to interact with something smaller like that with my scrunchies or my keychains. This table, I keep a lot of my extra inventory, usually do a sale bin, and then I have my velvet items by size in the back. Be sure to like this video if you love how this display is turning out. I would love to get some feedback on my displays. I love making them so pretty and approachable. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I had a tip for you that could potentially convert to 20% higher sales. And this is it right here. Add a little table at the front of your booth that's very approachable, very accessible for people, and add some of your best sellers. These are things that actually sell all the time. For me, these double palm beanies are always selling, so I'd like to add some up at the front because that way people can actually approach them and see them right off the bat rather than walking all the way to the back of my booth. It seriously draws people in like crazy, and I get a lot of people just buying products right off of that table and not even going into my booth at all. If you use mannequins like these styrofoam heads, honestly, the slightest little breeze will knock them over. So I highly suggest bringing duct tape. It's actually on my free checklist that you can get in the description box below. We are pretty much all the way done with the display, but the last step is to add some finishing touches. Also, if you have some extra inventory, just put them underneath your tables and you can fill throughout the market as needed. Some of those finishing touches are just hanging things from your canopy, creating more vertical interest, and yeah, this is what the finished booth looks like. I would love to hear your thoughts on how you think the booth turned out, so let me know in the comments below. 
Now that you know the best setup strategy for your next market, you're gonna need to know what to actually bring. Check out this video right here to learn every display item you need to pack for your first market. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in this video right here.